What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you I being here. Today I am back with some more Anthem news for all those interested. But before we start people and before we get into the video, I have created an Anthem Facebook page which I will showcase all the latest info I find within it as well as me being active on it to those who have any questions for me. That Facebook page named Anthem News Hub can be found linked within the video description if you do want to check it out and drop it a like. Okay, so we're going to start with a bit of news which relates to gameplay and it's to do with the DDA. Now, if you don't know what this is, I will explain. DDA stands for Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment. Now, I'll read what it states on Wiki um, before I give you guys my opinion on such things. Dynamic Game Difficulty Balancing, also known as Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment or Dynamic Game Balancing, is the process of automatically changing parameters, scenarios and behaviours in a video game in real time based on the player's ability in order to avoid making the player bored if the game is say too easy or frustrated if the game is too hard. However, letting I players break the rules in which players are bound can cause the AI to cheat for example. AI players might be given unlimited speed in racing games to stay near the human player. The goal of dynamic difficulty balancing is to keep the user interested from the beginning to the end providing a good level of challenge. So that's what this means according to Wiki. But is such thing a good thing? In my opinion, I don't think it is when it comes to Anthem. Here's why. Anthem like Destiny will obviously have set challenges. Said set challenges will require you to be a certain level. Level being a key point here. It's something to chase. It's something to show off. It's something that makes us more powerful than people not on our level. If such a system is in place, what is the point of a level? If a newbie can come into the game, take part in the same activity you can, but you're 30 levels higher, yet he does the same amount of damage to said enemies and bosses in the activity you're in. That to me, although can be great in certain instances of certain games, I don't think would work in Anthem. I actually believe Anthem will be a game which you progress through. Things will open up according to your level. Now, when it comes to DDA and the uh, actual talk around Anthem over the past week, is the point of EA also being a part of Anthem along with Bioware. Now, as we know, EA in the past and their DDA systems they have implemented in the past games are a bit of a dodgy one. What deters people off when EA and DDA are mentioned in the same sentence is as follows. EA have used such a mechanic which they have implemented into past games which supposedly heavily increased the odds in players purchasing pay to win items to basically keep up with players they are playing with or against. Kind of sketchy, yes I agree. Now a post on Reddit was put out on this and I'll read you through it. Seems to me like I hope that Anthem won't psychologically bend us over grows more dim by the minute. Pattern to allow them to adjust uh, difficulty on the fly in PvE and PvP and or pay us with players we have no business being paired with as is discussed in Jim's latest video. I urge you all do not pre-order for a shiny new suit. Tell your friends not to either and goes on to say basically don't buy anything but Bioware were quick to counter such claims. Brandon Holmes, Bioware's creative director stated in reply I'm not sure where this is really coming from. We're not doing any of that though. So this is kind of great news. If Bioware are stating such a pattern will not be included in their game, which increases the odds of making basically you want to purchase items uh, to keep up with other players, this is a good thing. It's good to see also Bioware taking the lead here. So such a mechanic, such a system will not be a part of Anthem, according to Brendan Holmes. So we're going to move on, but Brendan Holmes will stick with us as he is actually really active on Reddit, responding to fans on questions about the game. So what else can we learn from this dude? Well, a post was made talking about Anthem if it would be open world. So the post was titled, Will this game be open world? We had one initial reply stating, We won't know until we get more information. However, I am hoping it's more like The Division than Destiny. Holmes replied with this, It's a bit of a mix. Destiny has some very cool server technology that allows them to host migrate seamlessly. This means that they can partition up spaces to be fairly small, which helps avoid taxing servers. This is obviously speculation on his behalf. We're taking a different approach. We have different tech, so our areas are a fair bit larger, but there will likely be some loads between some of the areas. We're still figuring out the exact details on a lot of this stuff. Someone else commented with this. I recall the quote from the investor call Anthem, our new IP service from Bioware, will introduce a contagious open world that is ever changing. So as to not go into spoilers, I think I'm right that devs in the past have used several tricks to stitch adjoining zones together, having a load without it looking like a load. 
tight corridors, gaps in rocks, tunnels. Dragon Age Inquisition, even with an open world zone, would sometimes have load screens. I guess this is all about judging all those priorities I hear about. Holmes then replied stating, yeah basically the trick is mainly that you have to hide visually all the stuff that you want to load out and in. So in an open world game, maybe you go into a giant canyon, as you move through it, you unload a big area behind you. A bit later on, you load in the big area in front of you. So this is actually seriously interesting. It kind of shapes up the open worlds we will experience with Anthem. Another thing to talk about, which is a curious subject to many, and that is gameplay fuel. Sure it looked great within a demo we saw at E3, but how will it play? So we saw this question asked on Reddit, how will movement combat controls feel within the game, possibly give a comparison to what's out already, Mass Effect, Division, Gears. As someone that loves the third person view, I think how the controls feel will really determine playability. From my experience with the Mass Effect games, it's always felt clunky, where as compared to the Division movement and combat just feels smooth. Holmes replied with, our lead gameplay designer Chris King has a lot of experience with combat design and feel. I think we're in good hands. So Chris King, let's check out what else this guy's been involved in. Starting from the bottom, making our way to the top, Saints Row and The Punisher, Tools and Web Programmer, Red Faction Guerrilla, Gameplay Programmer, Saints Row 2, Systems and Gameplay Designer, Red Faction Armageddon, Systems Designer, Saints Row 3rd, Lead Combat Designer, Halo 4, Lead Sandbox Gameplay System Designer, Halo 5, Lead Sandbox Gameplay System Designer, Mass Effect, Lead Gameplay Designer, and Anthem, Lead Gameplay Designer. So he does have some decent games under his belt, but I do agree with the initial question here. To me, Mass Effect did feel a little clunky, but I'm pretty sure this will work out and this game will feel super smooth. I actually love Saints Row games and I feel they play quite well. They are from far perfect in terms of mechanics of gameplay, but they were decent enough and I enjoyed them for sure. But until we actually get our hands on, we ain't actually going to know how it feels, are we? I mean, we can see all the videos in the world, but until we play it ourselves, we ain't going to know. Okay, so we're going to move on and on to API. Holmes was asked, I don't have the actual quote saved anywhere, so I can't link you it, but I believe that Bioware have said that they are very interested working on having an open API of that system style by used by third party applications. As for my personal opinion on the matter, Destiny's open API was one of the features I loved about the game. Being able to access all of that stuff from my phone or tablet was basically epic. Holmes replied with, yes, we're really interested in that idea. Personally, I've played around with a lot of Riot's API and I've also been really impressed by what the community has done with Destiny's API. I'd love to see what you folks could do if we had one as well. So this could be something we do see in the future for sure. All this new info is kind of giving us a general idea of how this game will perform and so far I'm loving every moment of it. It's far from being in its final stages and info still on the game is rather scarce. I will however have you guys covered on any update that comes and from wise covered right here on my channel so if you are new around here and Anthem is the game you want to see be sure to subscribe it's but yes guys that is it for another Anthem news video don't forget join my Facebook page if you want to be up to date with the latest news too thanks for stopping by as always and I will catch you on that next one always in the wrong